So I watched this video by Candace Lowry called Digital Detox Challenge. And um, basically it was inspired by this sort of camp where you go, you um, put away all your devices for a weekend. And I thought it'd be a fun thing to try. Um, my husband and I do uh, what we call screen-free evenings every now and then. You know, basically the same thing. We put away our phones or tablets or computers. So we put all of our devices in a pile in, in the library and we joked that we were gonna like put them in a box with a bell on the lid so that uh, we couldn't get them out without being found out. Uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, should we have the sound on in case someone called? I, I said no because uh, mostly the people who call me, especially on the weekends, are, you know, um, spam callers, stuff like that. And uh, I told him that like he could just tell his parents, who are pretty much the only people to call him, that he was going to be out of range. And it wasn't because I thought that the f talking on the phone is bad, it's just that I think it's, it's so easy to just, uh, you know, you pick up your phone to check the one thing and then suddenly you're stuck in there because you get all these other notifications, all that stuff. So we put our stuff away. And uh, what's funny is that we had a weekend that was pretty much like any other weekend. Uh, you know, we did the same stuff. We read some books, we went for a walk, uh, but we weren't distracted, which was kind of cool. I was almost a little bit disappointed that it didn't, um, it didn't make as much of a difference as I thought it would. I was like, where's the challenge if it's not hard? Like I said, normal weekend, except then this happened. So we got home from our walk uh, and you had some coffee. I finished my tea. Um, we, you know, talked a little bit about our reflections about how I sort of missed the social aspect of just talking to people. And I was reading my book and then the, the doorbell rang because I hadn't told anyone we were doing this. So two of my friends had gotten so worried that I hadn't um, either, you know, responded to uh, Facebook Messenger chats or texts that they had come over to check that I was okay because Pontus hadn't answered his phone either and he always has his phone on him and uh, answers phone calls, which I don't always do because I don't keep the sound on. So we had scared them. They thought that something bad had happened and we did we explained what was going on but also made very sure to explain that that wasn't like part of the experiment to see if anyone would miss me or us and now I feel kind of bad that I joked earlier like oh I wonder if anyone is wondering where I am because clearly like I thought you know I thought it wasn't a big deal I was just going online and I thought that it would be kind of silly to be like I'm going offline for the weekend, like, I'm not that important, but apparently if you're as uh, internet addicted as I am, and also if you're, people know that you're getting kittens and you don't post pictures of those kittens, people are, well, they didn't actually call the hospital, but they said that, that was only a few further steps away, so now I, I feel bad. <laughs> They did try to like check hospitals and the police and stuff. Well, they on, checked. They checked, I think. they checked like the police blotter and mm -hmm. to see if like are there any traffic accidents or, um, uh, like reported fires or anything. I mean, it makes total sense because like okay, even if both our phones were dead, we still have computers, uh, so we would have seen stuff. I'm going to try to uh, like gather my thoughts later and and talk about the stuff that this weekend made me think about, but it turns out that that is probably the main message. If you are generally a person who is online a lot and you decide to go offline for the weekend, tell people. Because I think if, if it had only been you, people might not have noticed as quickly because you don't post a lot and you're you're slow to use like messenger and that kind of stuff. Two or three weeks maybe. <laughs> well, not necessarily, but like Whereas with me, like sometimes, yeah, last night, I think they were just like, oh, that's weird, she's not online, but she's probably like, kittens, whatever. Then today, around noon, so, so they were here at, I think, three. And it's a good thing, actually, we took a shorter walk than we had planned because I wanted to get home and work in the garden while the weather was still nice. Otherwise, we might have not been here when she knocked <laughs> and rang the doorbell, and that, that could have gotten scary. She might have broken in. Actually, the other friend who came by bus uh, said that 
the thing that stuck in her head is because apparently there have been some um, burglaries in the area and she was like, I'm so scared that I'm gonna ring the doorbell and it's gonna be somebody else who pretends to live there and that you two are like tied up and duct taped in the basement and, and you know, that she would have to pretend to be a Jehovah's Witness just so they wouldn't um, tie her up too. I feel bad. I feel so bad because I was just like, mm, it's not, it's not that big a deal. So that's the thing that happened. Which is probably like the main thing about the whole experiment now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, this, uh, I, I think, um, if I was a, a clickbaity person, this would be a hilarious, um, title for a video. They thought I was dead! They called the police! Uh, story time. That time I scared my friends a lot. So yeah, that's, that's a big takeaway. Let, let people know. So, um, I'm sorry. I don't know what time it is, but it's a couple of hours into the day and I think what I miss most, like I figured right now, is sound more than screen. Um, like I want to listen to a podcast or some music while I'm doing other stuff and cleaning. Um, also I have a song stuck in my head that I can't get out. I have already noticed a couple of times when my instinct is to like pull up my phone and you know just scroll through some stuff. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it's bad to be like, oh, no, you immediately want to pull out your phone. Um, but it's just, it's interesting to, to note. Uh, it's halfway through our first detox day. How many times do you think you've tried to reach for your phone? Uh, I think I stopped reaching for it pretty quickly. But uh, I've been walking past it and, and uh, having to stop myself. What, what do you want to do on your phone? Um, look things up, which I'm thinking about or uh, um, reading about, and then so I know I would have gotten stuck. So I'm, I'm not after, I'm not, I'm not looking to, uh, to like check social media or anything. I would have, but uh, I'm sort of get, having to stop because I wanted to look things up and I can't. Is it hard? Uh, not really. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. No. I think uh, it's basically a positive thing that I want to look something up and then I have to keep just thinking about it instead. Is it nice to not get to look at your phone? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, if you ask me now, after a few hours, it's, it's nice. Are you looking forward to meeting the kittens? Yes, very much. I think I will stop thinking about my phone. True story. I got to pick up one of the kittens and she kind of napped on me for a while and I realized that I wanted my phone just to be able to lie there for as long as possible because I either wanted to also take a nap or, you know, scroll through stuff, maybe read a book or something and it's a lot easier to hold a phone with one hand than to hold a big book and not worry that you're going to disturb the kitten. So that's an interesting thing. Phones are helpful for, for sleeping kittens. Is it healthy that I'm wondering if my friends are wondering where I am? Day two, uh, right now my main concern is uh, that the Cats are having sort of feline existential crises in the middle of the night, so we didn't sleep that well. But I realize it's good that I cannot Google uh, all the different ways that I should be making this easier, all the things I could do, because I think I already know. I also couldn't Google uh, a weird rash I've gotten <laughs> or anything else. Um, I don't know, I think it's, I think it's working out. It's, it's not as hard as I thought it would be. Um, I'm missing just, you know, checking up on things, talking to people. Um, Ponta says that he's enjoying having to just um, mull on things and not immediately be distracted. I am going to have an egg sandwich and some tea and continue reading what I think is my eighth book this weekend. 
another funny unexpected side effect uh, I need to fix my nails and I usually do that while I'm watching something like a TV show or a YouTube video it seems kind of weird and foreign to sit down and just do my nails we're going for a walk and realize that we have no idea of knowing how hot it is outside I mean obviously we can go outside and check but uh, we don't know what the weather is gonna be like so we might find halfway along our walk that it's too hot or too cold. It's, it's an interesting, it's an interesting realization that you don't have like a window thermometer or something. So are you taking this as encouragement to build all sorts of funny weird things to measure all sorts of things that I can't look on my phone to check? Yes. <laughs> so what are you thinking now? We're Halfway through day two, what are you missing? I'm pretty happy actually. <laughs> Is that so? Is there anything you wished you could check? Uh, yeah, lots of things, but I'm sort of batching them up for, for when I'm allowed to now. And I think that's maybe even better. Are you writing them down? Yeah, yeah I try to write everything down. So I'm figuring out I need to check and I think I'm probably going to have 10 or so things I want to check. And maybe I would have checked two of them and just read Twitter if I had the phone, my phone instead. So, nothing bad about this experience? Uh, I don't know what I've missed, so hard to say for sure. <laughs> what do you think we'd be doing right now if we were using our phones? Probably scrolling through Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we'd take this walk? Uh, Maybe. The weather is surprisingly nice. Yeah, it is a really nice day. That probably helps too. But we could have wasted it on our phones. <laughs> Do you think I'd be Pokemoning right now? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> we usually go out <laughs> onto that little dock, but it's a duck dock today. I had to take off my sweater because it's apparently not at all the end of September. probably do something like this again uh, with obviously the caveat that I would tell people that I was having an Amish weekend. I don't know that a whole weekend is maybe necessary every time, uh, but it was a good reset. I would definitely recommend people try it. Again, let people know. Um, just because it, it... I don't know if it's just me, I like the idea of trying if I could do something. like. Uh, last year we went vegetarian for a month. We didn't tell people then either, but that wasn't as much of a problem. Uh, just because I wanted to see how big of a difference would it make in our lives. Um, and I think sometimes it's good to have like a, a strict specific set of rules because if you just say like, oh, we're gonna try to eat more vegetarian or less meat, it's really easy to, you know, fall out of it. Whereas if you're like, this, these are the rules and anything else is cheating, you really notice your behavior. And it was kind of the same here. Like if we would have just had a weekend saying like, oh, we're gonna try not to, you know, look at our phones or check the internet as much. It's really easy to, you know, just look at your phone. But if it's cheating, if you have to go to the other room and get it, I think mostly we'll probably just keep doing like screen-free evenings, sometimes maybe a screen-free day. Uh, probably not 48 hours totally. Because again, like you, you may need to keep in touch with people or do stuff. What I think was the main thing for me is that it meant a weekend of not working. Uh, because since I'm a freelancer, I work from home, it's really easy to just, you know, I, I just wanna look at this thing or this thing came up and I have a short deadline or something like that. Um, and so I couldn't just go to my computer and do the thing and regardless of whether or not I got stuck there for half an hour with work or 10 minutes of work and 20 minutes of like Twitter, I didn't, actually that's not true because I did read some books that I had to read for work, but you know, reading is nice. So maybe that is also one of the lessons to take with me is to try to make sure to, they, sorry, they, the kittens are, are meowing. So maybe that is 
you know, more than like not checking Twitter, not talking to people, not reading stuff, because I don't think that's necessarily a problem, but maybe making sure that I do have time off, that I give my brain and my relationship time off from work. That's free time, that's, that's my time, that's our time. That's a kitten. That's, that's the sprocket. And I think Widget's coming up behind. Yep. <laughs> What's funny, what we realized is that we got Sprocket the gray cat matches that cat tower and Widget matches our floors. So they're both camouflageable. And they're so cute. Actually, I think maybe the kittens were part of, <laughs> of the problem uh, from both sides because we were so focused on like, um, are they doing okay introducing them to the household? uh that we maybe didn't consider as much like okay will people care about this um but i think also maybe people were like why are they not posting pictures of the kittens something must be terribly terribly wrong um <laughs> this might turn into just 30 minutes of me looking at silly kittens, but knowing the internet, that might be okay. Anyway, um, would I recommend you do this? Yes. Uh, again, let people know what you're going to be doing, but just to see, um, cause like I said, it was funny to realize that, uh, we're not as addicted as we might have thought we were. It's more of a habit. Um, and sometimes, you know, uh, what is a habit is kind of a philosophical question. Uh, is it something that you can give up or is it something that will be hard to give up? You know, that kind of thing. It definitely wasn't a detox. Uh, there was no sort of, you know, we didn't get the shakes, we didn't get the DTs. But yeah, it can be good to look at, uh, even if it's not an addiction, if it's just a habit, is it something that you want to change, something that you need to change, or are you, are you good with it? Um, and I think you know, maybe I can adjust a little bit, but I'm... Oh, she's shut herself in the library. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go uh, rescue... I'm gonna go rescue the cat. Um, thank you for watching. Subscribe, clicky, whatever. Uh, comment down below if you've done it, if you want to do it. I'll link Candace's video and stuff like that. And um, be good to yourself. Drink some water, take a nap, uh, and I'll see you later. Bye!